Hello everyone and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam aka Hamar and today I wanted to talk about where you could start reading some Forgotten Realms and my experience with Forgotten Realms so far. So hopefully this won't be too long but it'll probably run a little longer than normal. Oh yeah, I totally didn't give myself this little curl here in the front. It's been a little rainy today and my hair does funny things when it gets wet. So anyways, I wanted to get through this really quick. I will say that I do run a blog. It's called The Forgotten Realms Lyceum. You can kind of see where I got my name for this channel. I made that blog a couple, uh, back in 2019, I believe, but I started in 2019, but I made a post on April 7th of 2021, so a little over a year ago, on where you could start with The Forgotten Realms. I felt like I was decently far enough in that I could actually, actually give some recommendations. Now, I do want to say that for those who don't know what the Forgotten Realms is, it is a big, epic, high fantasy world for Dungeons and Dragons. It's a Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting and has been since the 80s, so since first edition AD&D. &D. Um, and it is the main setting that they use these days, though it's a little kind of watered down in fifth edition, but it's not, that's a different topic I don't really want to go into. Um, but, uh, it's, it was created by Ed Greenwood, who is an idol of mine. He's a lovely Canadian author, and then uh, he, wrote, he wrote several books, several novels in Forgotten Realms, and also tons and tons of source guides and like like setting material for like actually playing the tabletop. Now the thing is, you don't have to actually have played D and D or ever plan on playing D and D to enjoy the Forgotten Realms novels. I read my first Forgotten Realms novel in 2017 um, before I played Dungeons and Dragons ever. So I just want to go over. Basically that. Now, I will say there's almost 300 novels in the Forgotten Realms. Well, novels and novellas. And they're they're essentially not... Um, the, the line, the novel line, is essentially dead. Um, for those worrying, the number's going to get bigger. It does get bigger, but the only novels being published as of right now in the Forgotten Realms are The Legend of Driss books by Ari Salvatore. That one's approaching 40, might be at 40 now. Um, Wizards of the Coast has stopped publishing in-house, and they go out of house, and so the authors have to find these deals with others, and basically Driss is the most popular, so it's the only one being published right now. Uh, kind of sad, especially since there's several storylines not finished, um, but that's just the state of it today. So the first novel came out in 1987. This is actually up here on the shelf behind me somewhere. That is Dark Walker on Moonshay. It is the first in a trilogy. There is a sequel trilogy to that trilogy. It is by Douglas Niles. And it is a series I have not read yet. If you're interested in following publication order, you would start there. Now, I don't recommend that. I know I haven't read the books. Um, I know some people do start there. Uh, but I don't know. Just the, the publication order just doesn't seem right. I mean, if, if you do want to, if that's your thing, then go ahead. But um, to me, just go with what you want to read. So I did have a list. This is a modified list of the one I put on my blog a year ago. And hopefully I can give you an idea of maybe where you would want to start reading these Forgotten Realms stories. But I will say that they're D&D novels, so they're very much a mix of Tolkien with sword and sorcery, which is kind of the idea of D&D. But they're also very influential on the genre today. So they are generally heroic fantasy. Now you can get very broad in that, of course. So we're going to go over a few of these real quick. So in my blog post, I recommended you could go with Ed Greenwood Presents Waterdeep. Now, this is a loosely connected series because they all just take place in Waterdeep. There are no characters that carry you over from book to book. Each book is by a different author, takes place in a different part of Waterdeep. And now those books are, um, they're named after parts of Waterdeep as well. So there's Blackstaff Tower, Mist Shore, Down Shadow, um, City of the Dead, The God Catcher, and Circle of Skulls. Of those, I think Blackstaff Tower is a favorite Miss Shore is kind of a YA protagonist, um, while Blackstaff Tower feels more like the older D&D novels, if you like those. Um, Down Shadow is very much Batman and the the very upper levels of the Underdark that are beneath Waterdeep. Um, City of the Dead is a gothic novel. If you like gothic horror, this is about the graveyard, which is named City of the Dead, in Waterdeep by Rosemary Jones, who is one of my favorite Forgotten Realms novel um, writers, but she... Honestly, ever only ever wrote a few, um, but even with this one alone, she became a favorite. And then we have The God Catcher was the first novel by Aaron M. Evans. This one's also great. It is kind of about someone 
switching classes, um, so to speak, if you want to put it in D&D terms. Uh, and then Circle of Skulls is about mysterious disappearances going on. My favorite of these is probably the City of the Dead and then maybe the God Catcher. I read those before the rest though, uh, which just goes to show you can read these however you want. These are fourth edition novels, um, which there are lore changes in between each edition. Um, I don't find them that bad, personally. Uh, the lore changes, I mean, the lore changes, yeah, I, I guess some of them I find bad, but the novels with those lore changes aren't too infuriating for me. If you're old school, they might not sit well with you, though. So, and if you like City of the Dead, going off of that as well, if you like the gothic setting, there is a trilogy by Richard Lee Byers called the Haunted Land Trilogy. It takes place in Thay, which is a land of full of undead, essentially. This is also, I think, a, I believe a fourth edition um, one, so even more undead than it than third edition Thay. And uh, I have not read this one, but I can attest that Richard Lee Byers is a good author. I've read some of his books in the Forgotten Realms and whatnot, so that one might be up your alley too, but again, I haven't read it. So. And then I was thinking, if you want to stand alone in the Forgotten Realms, a good one, especially if you like YA stuff, this is very much a YA novel of sorts. It's by, um, well, I don't actually remember who's by. It's by Pratt, I think is his last name. Um, but it's Venom in Her Veins. It's a standalone novel, again, a fourth edition one, but it takes, um, it involves a, a young girl who's part of a merchant family as she comes to understand her past, um, like her, and her biological, like, relations. Uh, very interesting. Uh, this one does involve a lot of Wanti, which are like the snake-like people in Forgotten Realms and Dungeon Dragons. And if you like that, this one might be a good one for you as well. There is another trilogy, I believe, by Alyssa Smedman, I'm forgetting the name right now, that also involves Wanti, but I have not read that one. So if you like Wanti, maybe check out those. Keeping with the YA kind of vibe, if you like YA and you like great protagonists, and if you like the trope of twins, then this one would be good for you. This would be Brimstone Angels by Aaron M. Evans. There are six books. They do vary a lot. This one also has a lot of action with devils, so fiendish characters. In D&D, there are Tiefling twin sisters are the main characters. Uh, one is Warlock and one is a fighter of sorts. And so a uh, very interesting dynamic that's going on there. Um, kind of some odd, like, romance stuff going on, as you kind of expect in a YA somewhat. So, um, but very good stories. Um, the, the, first, the first one takes place mostly in Neverwinter. The second one goes to a lost library of ancient Nethril, and then the third one is actually, we'll get to that in a minute actually, but that one has some special notes about it, but that one starts involving the gods even more, especially as Modeus, who is the god of the hells, essentially, right? Um, and then fourth is set place in Cormir, which is basically the Arthurian kingdom in the Forgotten Realms, and it is heavy in the political intrigue, and then five and six focus a lot on the Dragonborn, so if you like Dragonborn, now there is a Dragonborn character throughout the entire series, so if you like Dragonborn, this one might be for you anyways. Now speaking of another race, again, so if you like Tieflings Dragonborn, maybe Brimstone Angels is for you. If you like Wyatt, maybe Brimstone Angels is for you. Aaron M. Evans is a great author, by the way. But then there's the Gilded Rune, who I believe is also by Elisa Smedman, but I have not read it again. It is standalone, but this one is one, I think really the only novel that really focuses on dwarves. Now you can get other novels with some dwarf stuff in it, but this is the one that really focuses on them. And now I'm not a huge fan of this series. For those who watch my contents, you will be aware of this. I'm not a big fan of Wario Salvatore and I'm not a big fan of Legend of The novels are very hit and miss for me, but if you like good combat, and I would say overly detailed combat, and that's really the big plus of the series is combat. So if that's your thing, then maybe read The Legend of Driss. Now I will say you can either start with the Dark Elf trilogy or the Icewind Dale trilogy. I personally recommend the Dark Elf trilogy just because chronologically it fits better. Um, and I also personally think the first book in the Dark Elf trilogy, the Crystal Shard, which is the first Driss book released where Driss is not really the main character. He's just one of the characters in the party in that trilogy. The first book is really bad, actually. I would say the Crystal Shard is pretty poor. Um, I think I should probably warn you if you're gonna go into this series. Um, so I would start with the first three, which I think are all okay and then go into the fourth one already being familiar somewhat with the character, realizing it's not going to be the greatest. The writing is rough. The story itself is okay. Um, but then books five and six, which are Streams of Silver and Halfling's Gym, are probably Salvatore's best. And then I'm afraid that, that it doesn't actually get better. I've read about... 
at this point I've read 10 more of Salvatore's Forgotten Realms novels after those and none of them ever got even close to books four and uh books five and six so and I'm afraid that's probably not ever gonna improve so if that sounds like it's okay for you go ahead and start it I know it's popular or else I wouldn't even mention it to be honest they're they're easily my least favorite uh, Salvatore's books are easily my least favorite in the Forgotten Realms and now I want to talk there's um there are some series that focus on the events that brought Forgotten Realms from one edition of the game to another edition because there are differences in the game between editions and so they kind of have to explain this in the lore. So the version, the books that came out between first and second edition are called the Avatar series and this explains the Avatar Crisis where the gods were cast down and they had to walk in mortal avatar form which means they could die and this also meant some other people that were mortals became gods. And so this one is, I'm actually in the middle of it right now, there are five books but to be more precise, it's really an original trilogy with a follow-up sequel called Prince of Lies that came later, and then there's a sequel to that called Crucible, Trial of Seer of Mad. After that, I am actually just about to start Crucible right now. But <clears throat> the first three books are really a trilogy, and that is Shadowdale, Tantris, and Waterdeep. Now, this follows a group of heroes, Midnight the Mage, Siric the Thief, and Sellsword, and Kelimvor, who's a fighter and a Sellsword, and then Adon, who is a cleric of Sune Firehair, who's the goddess of beauty. Um, so these are pretty good. I don't think they're amazing. The series is written by multiple authors, the first two by Scott Sienson, and the third one by Troy Dinning. They will all say Richard Allinson if you find the old versions, but it is a pen name. The fourth book, I believe, is written by Gene Robb, and it's easily the best of those first four, at least. Gene Robb just seems like he's a better author, if I were to say personally. And then the fifth book is written by Troy Dinan again. And Dinan is okay, um, so I think I will enjoy Crucible too. So if you like those big events, that gives you a kind of an overarching idea of the Forgotten Realms, especially since gods are very active in the Forgotten Realms, this one might be for you. Now the other one, the one you might actually see at Barnes & Noble or at some other bookstores, besides Drist would be the Sundering because these are still in print. It's really just about the only Forgotten Realms still in print besides Drist, which is really sad. I would not recommend you start with these, just so you're aware. They're also, they are the realm shaking event that took us from fourth to fifth edition, but fifth edition is really shallow as far as lore goes, but that's really all Wizard cares about. So they're not gonna tell you what I'm about to tell you. Book one in that series, Companions, is book like 31 or 32 in The Legend of Drist. So if you feel like skipping 30 books, go ahead and read it. The Godborn is book eight in the Erebus Chaos series. So if you feel like skipping all those amazing books, go ahead. Um, there are books like The Reaver and The Sentinel, which are standalone. Go ahead and read those. They're actually pretty good, I would say. Um, one is by Byers and one is by Dinning. The third book in the series is The Adversary, which is also the third book in the Brimstone Angel series, which I already mentioned. So if you want to skip books one and two, which I think are amazing, then go ahead and skip them, but I don't recommend it. And then book six is um, one of the later Elminster books. So if you want to skip a bunch of Elminster books, go ahead and read The Herald, but I wouldn't recommend it. So I really don't recommend The Sundering at all unless you decide to pick up The Reaver or The Sentinel if those sound interesting to you. Besides that, I really, really would not recommend it. Now, if you want a good sampling, there are a decent amount of anthologies set in the Forgotten Realms, and they're generally called Realms of something. And one I think is actually really good, and it's one of the later ones, um, is Realms of War. I believe it's edited by Philip Athens. Now this one has stories from people like R.S. Salvatore. If you want to get a taste of his writing, it has uh, stories by like Bruce R. Cordell um, and several others. Now this it has is an amazing collection. It actually goes through time, so you get a good nice like slice of life kind of from different time periods in the Forgotten Realms and going up all the way basically to the present, which would be the late 15th century of Day of Reckoning. So if you want a good anthology, that one is decent. It's also got this awesome Raymond Swanlin cover art, so uh, what's not to like? And then we have The Lost Empires. Now, maybe not this whole series, but this one does give you definitely Indiana Jones vibes, especially the first book, Lost Library of Co Cormanther by Mel Odom. This is basically Indiana Jones fantasy. I'm just gonna say it. He's an archaeologist. He's got a pet bat magical bat companion and it goes all over the place and it's actually really fun romp uh, but it, I mean it's not like spectacular fiction but it's really fun um, and then the other books in that series are pretty good Star of Kusra is a really good one and 
The Nether Scroll is decent. Lynn Abbey is a great author. This one just takes a little while to get going. Faces of Deception is more of the hard one to parse in this series. In, in this series, They are all standalone. They're written by different authors. You don't have to read all of them. Um, Faces of Deception has one of the worst endings, pro or probably the worst ending I've ever read in Forgotten Realms novels. So the rest of the novel is fine. You're just going to have to be unsatisfied with the ending if that sounds okay with you. But that one is about kind of like a Far Eastern adventure in the Forgotten Realms. They go to the Yemenal Mountains, which are way in the east. I don't even think they're in Faerun, technically, which is where most of Forgotten Realms stuff takes place, the continent of Faerun. And then here is a really big one that I, this is like, if, I were to, if you were to ask, like, what is my opinion without getting into specifics, this is the one I'd recommend to you. And maybe I'm getting to it late in the video, but I'm sorry. That is the Symbia Gateway to the Realms series. This came out in the late 90s. It was part of a series to introduce you to the Forgotten Realms because there are so many Forgotten Realms novels at the time and they're like, you know what? No one's gonna know where to start. So basically they made these books and it had a big start here, you know, sticker on it essentially. It didn't really, you know what I mean? But that was essentially what they were trying to do. And now this is kind of a series like some of the other ones. There's different authors and it starts with The Halls of Stormweather, which is an anthology introducing the characters. And then you have books continuing those stories for those characters. So you have the first Erebus Kale story in Shadow's Witness. It's book two in the series, the first actual novel in the series. And then you also have ones following like each of the children and like um, the mother, right? I, I think the the one that follows the daughter Tazzy is kind of boring to be honest, um, but the rest are actually all pretty entertaining. And you can skip them if you want. I would, if, I would just start there to get a good taste I mean, you get werewolves and vampires and deadly magic and a bunch of, well, you get badass moms, I mean, to put it that way too, and badass daughters. Uh, and then you get like sorcery, of course, with the, it, which in some interesting concepts there, and you get like clerics who follow dark gods and stuff like that. So demons, I mean, like what's not the like? If you're gonna wanna only read one of those, I would definitely recommend Shadow's Witness, which goes into my neck rec recommendation. There is a sequel to Shadow's Witness called the Erebus Kale Trilogy. You can start with it. I think Twilight Falling is the first book. I don't have any of these books out right now, uh, so I'm just going off memory. And this is a great sequel trilogy to Shadow's Witness. You don't have to read Shadow's Witness, but it really kind of sets the pay, like sets the tone for Erebus Kale as a character. He is a thief. He is entangled with a god of thieves who basically makes him his priest. And very, very good dark fantasy. If you like dark fantasy, this is a great one. This is one of my favorite series in the Forgotten Realms, along with the sequel trilogy, which I would say is even better, but I wouldn't start with that one. That's the Twilight War trilogy. Okay, we have two more on this list. One is the Finder Stone trilogy, which is Azure Bonds. There was a video game for this back in the day. This is by Kate Novak and Jeff Grubb. They're actually both authors, but Jeff Grubb was more of the, um, more on the, like, the D&D material, like, in-game kind of stuff, but some of the short stories are actually written by him, and the comic book, like, with these characters are just straight up written by him and not by his wife at all, um, and this story follows one of the best pairs, I think, honestly, in fantasy, which is Alias, who is a construct of sorts, it's kind of interesting, you have to figure it out as you read, and Dragonbait, who is a Sauril, so kind of like a dragon person, um, he actually appears in a fifth edition adventure, Tomb of Annihilation, um, but they don't really speak, well, they can speak Draconic, I think, in 5th edition, if you look at it that way, but their their speech is mostly coming from the sense they release based off their emotions, and uh, they have this great adventure, there's dragons in this one, there's a god of rot that's chasing after the party, essentially, there is a person, there's a halfling in the party as well, there's also a man from Termish, and it's pretty great. Now, the sequel book focuses on the halfling character and a minor character from the first book. It's more of a murder mystery, but that one's also really great. That's why I'm Spur. And the third book brings the characters back together to basically complete this confrontation they had with the god in the first book and really is in the series greatly. Now, there are, those characters do appear in some standalone novels afterwards I haven't read yet, but this is a great, great series, honestly. It's one of my favorites. And then last but not least, we have Elminster, the Making of the Mage. Now, Elminster is the Gandalf of the Forgotten Realms. There's a good chance seeing him or heard of him. And he's his first book is basically his coming-of-age story. And if you like coming-of-ages like I do every once in a while, then this is pretty good. It's a pretty good one. It's very unique. Um, 
Ed Greenwood has a very interesting style. He's very unique voice, um, but he's somewhat like Liber in some action sequences. You see that less in this book and you see it more in some of his other books, but this one is essentially a standalone um, if you want to read it as that. Though there are four more books in the Elminster series and there are more Elminster series after that. So I have read the sequel to it, um, Elminster and Mithdraenor, which is almost as good as Elminster, The Making of a Mage. It's slightly not as entertaining, I think, but there's just a certain magic that Ed Greenwood, I think, like, has a special talent for, because there's very few people that are able to make me feel like I'm reading a fantasy novel like I did when I was, like, 12 or 13, you know? Like, it's almost like it's a new experience again, which is quite magical, if I do say so. And it's it's just a great story. It's very interesting. And uh, it starts with Elminster as a kid and how he goes through being a thief and a priest, and uh, just a brigand, and then a mage. So it's pretty cool. Now, I will say that I've read almost 70 Forgotten Realms novels of the recording of this. That's a decent chunk, but it doesn't even feel like it since there's so many more. And I have a lot more, actually, and I will continue to read them, so I might make another video like this at some point. But I know some people who follow me have been itching to get to Forgotten Realms. Um, I know some people who follow me have started Forgotten Realms, so I just wanna know how that experience is going for you, if you guys have any more recommendations, where to start, because I mean, if I had read every Forgotten Realms novel, I could probably give you a better list, a more definitive list, but even then, um, it would be extremely long, and I'd have to make this into like three parts, because man, like, I'd give you the stuff that I just straight up recommend you start with, and that stuff like based off your mood, and then the stuff based off what the type of, st like the, the genres you like, and the type of characters you like, and it's just like, that's a lot of work. So I know this isn't going to answer everyone's questions and I'm surely missing some great books that I just haven't read yet. And so I hope it helped somewhat though. And this, I mean, just let me know. If you do want to talk Forgotten Realms or Sword and Sorcery, Fantasy, Sci-Fi, anything, I do have a Discord now. It's very small, so just feel free to join the discussion if you want. And I will leave a link for that below. But otherwise, it's been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.